What's up everybody, you already know how it go. It is your boy B back with another video. Excuse me for not having a shirt on, just came from the beach. But guys, I wanted to talk to you about simply making a difference in your life. Like literally, guys, my life as an entrepreneur has been something um, of a process. Um, I have had ups, I've had downs, I have had good moments, I've had bad moments, but I was never ever content, right? And I wanted to actually take my time to talk to you guys about it because I know how many people go through the same things that I've went through on a daily basis as far as doubting yourself, not knowing your worth, not knowing if you would ever want to see yourself um, in the role of owning your own business. Now, me personally, I always wanted to own my own business. I remember being in high school, creating business plans instead of going to class, skipping class, going to the library to create business plans. And one thing I will say is I knew very early that I did not want to go to college. I knew school wasn't for me, not because I couldn't perform, not because I couldn't articulate myself or I couldn't pass a test, but because I knew that the way that the school system was as far as grading um, and teaching people that failure was something you should be reprimanded for, I knew for a fact that that was not the way that I wanted to live. Um, and what I mean by that to elaborate is I never wanted to feel as if I couldn't make a mistake. I've failed plenty of tests. I've got good grades on tests. I've got A's, but I also got F's. And what I realized is every time I got my report card, <clears throat> I would bring it home to my mother and I would hear her opinion on my performance, right? And it was good sometimes, and sometimes it was bad. But regardless, I didn't like the fact that people frowned upon you making a mistake or you not excelling in a certain um, educational aspect, right? So when I got into the 10th grade, I started to realize, yo, I need to find another way that fits me, something that makes me comfortable. And what I ended up doing was I ended up deciding I wanted to create my own club and it was gonna be club next level and I was gonna charge people, it was gonna be dancers, entertainers, uh, like rappers and artists. Um, was also going to be models and I was going to put them all together in one and, and build this club and I had that dream and ambition and uh, I'll just say it did not in my head seem far-fetched like I didn't have no money I didn't have no connections but I felt like this business would take off if I planned it the right way and lo and behold guys I was able to actually start to put myself in the in better positions just by planning like when i started to create business plans and look up and google how to create a business plan and start to actually write down what i wanted i started to see like how obtainable it was but i also started to organize my mental to understand the steps i needed to take and when it comes to these steps guys that's why I'm really big on the plan of attack. Um, I'm really big on getting you guys to every Sunday, write down exactly what you wanna do, how you're gonna do it, and at the certain time you're gonna do it at. Because I understood that no matter where you wanna be in life, you gotta have a plan. And the plan that you have is essential, but executing it is, I think, the point that really matters right so i drew this business plan up in high school um i ended up graduating and i moved to philadelphia and i actually started the club and i will say it was a success when it comes to the operations like i got models i got artists i got photographers i learned that the photographers weren't as professional as i thought Controlling the models and making sure they showed up to events wasn't as easy as I thought. And I ended up closing that business down. But the point was that failed 
in the long term, but the short term, I understood that the plans that I put in place actually matter. And I tell you this to let you know that no matter what you have or you envision you doing in the future, you need to make a plan. You need to make some type of written plan so that you can actually execute it. And if it fails, it fails. I've had a couple failed businesses, failed um, club, failed modeling agency, um, a failed um, electronic store, a couple failed electronic stores. I had to close several stores before I was able to keep one open. Um, and that's how it is. That's how it works. You feel me? Like, it takes a failure for you to sometimes understand how to succeed. So to the person out there that's like, oh, I do want to do X, but I also don't want to fail. You have to understand that that failing is a part of the process to get to the end result. I personally lost my first cell phone store to a group of um, Indian brothers. Um, so my cell phone store was doing good and we were making money. I'll never forget. I At this time I had uh, four employees, I had a repairman um, and we were making good money. We were making good money. But what ended up happening, sorry y'all, that's some mosquitoes everywhere. What happened was um, the landlord was a, it was him and his brother, right? And I don't, I say Indian not to call out Indian people or anything. Like it's not no, like I'm not really focused on the race, but I want to say Indian because this is what he told me. He told me something very important that like struck a huge fire under me, right? He told me, one, he was like, I see your business doing great. I would like to partner with you. At the time, I only had one store. So he told me he has other properties around Philadelphia and he'll get my stores in those properties um, and we'll be able to work, right? So I said, you know what? Yeah, because at that time I had a family um, and in my head, I wanted to just create generational wealth and I had a plan. And I knew for a fact that failure wasn't something I was scared of. But the opportunity that presented itself seemed really good because I'm like, well, I'm making money at this location. Why wouldn't I be able to make money at others, right? So boom, fast forward, I ended up signing a contract with this guy. And it was to get the current location up to a certain number and then we were gonna expand. So the first month goes by of our partnership and I'm thinking that we're splitting everything down 50-50. When in all reality, when it came to split the money, he said, well, when I sign my name, that means my whole family. So I would have to split it with him, his brother and his dad. That's three people. It will be a four person partnership. Four people would split the profit of that one store. And at that moment, I realized he got me because four people outnumbered. Well, three people outnumbered me because I had now less percentage of my company. And when he did this, it was an eye opener because it showed me that just because you can expand fast doesn't mean you need to sell your business. It doesn't mean that you need to try and take a shortcut. So that's why every time we are talking on the phone, whether you book a call or you get a phone flipping academy course, or you just get any of my services, I always try to let you guys know I wanna teach you how to do it so you don't need me. And also I wanna do business great. I wanna have great business because I don't want to burn any bridges, right? Um, because I understand how it is to be scammed and got, right? So long story short, I ended up telling him I didn't wanna do the partnership because that was not the deal. That wasn't the deal. I told him that it was not the deal. He didn't wanna listen. He didn't agree. He felt like that was the deal. He ended up being able to take my company name at the time. And um, I ended up just saying, you know what? I'm out, I'm out. I told him that, I said, I'm out. I am going to uh, just rethink everything and move forward. So as I told him this, he got upset. And as we were moving forward with terminating the partnership, he ended up locking me out of the store. He ended up taking some of the furniture. It was a big mess. What I learned from that 
was to take your time and also embrace the failure. At that time, my store was making money, but I wanted it to make more money. I was being greedy. Sometimes you have to embrace the process and understand that the process is not going to, the process isn't going to just happen, right? You're not just going to be that multi-million dollar business. You're not, you gotta literally take baby steps. And when you try to shortcut it, guess what happens? You end up losing out or having to take minimal profit, minimal success because you wanted to do it fast. So to the person that is trying to build a business, it is important for you to understand that it is a process. It is a process. It's a really long, tedious process and you're gonna fail. You're going to fail and you have to embrace the failure and be able to live with it and move forward and move forward. That's it, just move forward. It's no point of having fast success that won't last. So I want you as an entrepreneur to understand like you can live any way you want. <laughs> you can live any way you want, but you're going to have to embrace the process. Just trying to do it fast and try to get fast money, I'm telling you right now, it, it, it may give you some money, but it's never gonna last. I've lost so much money trying to be fast. And now, close to my 30s, I understand that taking my time was the key. The whole time. Taking my time was the key. So, it's all good, y'all. I just wanted to share that story time with you. Um, and I thank you guys so much for watching. And I appreciate you. And I hope you guys have a great day and make money work for you. And I hope I see you guys at the top because it's too crowded at the bottom. Peace. Thank you.